Hey, what's up? Today we're giving away MAPS Performance. Great workout program. Uh, gets your body fit, mobile, athletic, and sexy. You're going to get sexy if you follow this program. Here's how you can get it for free. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Also, subscribe and turn on notifications. Got to do all those things. Then if we pick your comment, we'll notify you. We'll actually put a comment under yours. If you have your notifications turned on, you'll get a notification that says, hey, Mind Pump commented, and you won a free program. How cool is that? By the way, this is going to be a great episode. You're going to love this particular podcast. One more thing before we get started. We are running a promotion, MAPS Aesthetic and the Extreme Fitness Bundle. Both are 50% off. Go check them out at mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just don't forget to use the code May special for that discount. All right, enjoy this podcast. Who's got Viore? I'm not even wearing Viore today. So I'm wearing Viore. Like, Justin, always. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah we, rip stop pants. We represent. I, know, I'm, I mean, I normally am. These are the keep the, it a hundred. I'm gonna tell you what. I still haven't found any pair of pants more comfortable than the joggers, the Sunday joggers. Yeah, those aren't the Sunday joggers. No, these aren't, but the, yeah. that, these are also extremely comfortable. Yeah. I, wear, I wear them on the, the weekends. The Sunday joggers are like I have like 15 pairs, bro. It's like a yeah, what does it feel yeah. like? It feels like uh, like you're being hugged or something. Yeah. I don't know. It's just, it's just so wonderful. Yeah, the joggers that slowly hug. massaging my thighs. Yeah, they're st- they make incredible quality. I went to uh, where do we go? We went to Valley Fair. Um, no, not Valley Fair. Sorry, Santana Row. And they have a Lululemon there. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. And uh, so we walk through or whatever, and I see that they have guy stuff, and I'm like feeling the material. You guys are. It's too tight. Come man. on now. I, I just never. You know, into Fiori it. has their store there now. It's not open yet. But yes, they're building it. Oh, they're is it on the row or is it in the mall? It's on the row. Oh, they're, it's on the row. They're gonna crush. We are gonna have to make an appearance. They're gonna crush. Do you know by chance? Does it? Do you know launch date? Yeah. Do you have any idea? I don't know. I can look it up. Yeah. Could you Google Magic that for us, please? Google Magic. Those <laughs> Google fingers. Use Duck Put them to work. Use Duck Duck Go. Forget Google. I'm curious. Agreed. I, I want to talk to Joe. It's been how long? When did we have Joe on here? We had him on here. It's been a long time. Over a year? Not over a year. I feel like it. Yeah, it has. Yeah, over a year. It feels like it's been over a year. Well, yeah, we, he didn't come at all in 2020. Yeah. Because remember the last time he came, he showed all the he shared the analytics and like the scaling of the company. I'm so curious. They're, to- cr- they're crushing. Yeah. yeah, there. Are, if you read articles on athleisure wear, Viore's always named now like the big up and coming or whatever. It yeah. just takes that first order. I mean, people, it's like it's a quality thing. You you, you can totally feel the difference of it. Yeah, it makes it makes a huge difference. Yeah. Uh, I like their stuff. Yeah, but Santana was getting kind of it's getting busy now again. Have you guys gone in a while? You guys are, now you guys are over the hill, so yeah. and you're you don't go there anymore. No, I, I avoid this place. Everett <laughs> lives there, so we we go down there every once in a while to visit. Oh him. yeah, I ran into him. Oh, you did? Yeah, I ran into him once. Oh, I didn't know that yeah, down there. Yeah, yeah, we were hanging out, and he comes over hey it's one of the nicest guys what a nice dude i love ever right there yeah. I, I tell you what though he's he's like peter pan syndrome for sure you know, oh, that guy yeah. is like <laughs> you don't 40, 40 years old living living santana row I'd, life still like, i tell thing. you i tell you what a little we, envious sometimes it, exactly it is <laughs> yeah. it is attractive he's when, handsome he's fit when you're married and you have you're, you're you got you're married and you have a baby especially and then all the stuff that happens every once in a while you think oh man yeah, that guy's got it made. Don't you think every every guy though needs, or every like married you know dad needs that friend so you can like you so you can live vicariously through him a little bit so you don't yeah. like a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I feel like you need to because then you also get to see the drama and the bullshit. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. it's always the grass Valentine's always Day good. very boring yeah. for him. You know, yeah. Yeah. Christmas. Yeah. The holidays. day, the time you don't go talk to that guy is when you get in a fight with your with your wife. That's the mm-hmm. worst, right? You get in an mm-hmm. argument, and then you go see your friend. You're like, damn. Yeah. This guy's living the life. Yeah. yeah When's the last time you fought with someone like a girl? Like, oh, I, I just told her I wouldn't see her again. Oh, my God. <laughs> I just got her an Uber. What's yeah. that like? <laughs> like you dick. That's amazing. No, I'm just kidding. But it's uh, <laughs> it yeah. is a it's a it's definitely uh, uh, easy to sell, mm-hmm. but you don't want to buy it. It's uh, kind of sad. Doug, we got any uh, any officers, firefighters? I know I've been getting them like crazy. I sent them over to Jerry. What do we got going we on? We actually do. We got officers of the Calgary Police Service in Canada. Yeah. Oh, shout out to them. Some connects. Holla. Right. Thank you for what you do. You know, I'm really hoping with all these shout outs that the next time I get pulled over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, can, can we get out of some, <laughs> secret, some tickets? Secretly, that was my idea, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hopefully they love us so much. We get, get out yeah, of some tickets. Get, get pulled over and I'll just, like, pull my mask down. Yeah. Hey. Or yeah. like. Play, play mind pump while he pulls me around. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Do you want me to turn down the mind pump yeah. podcast? Can I just yeah. give you a program? Yeah. yeah. Can I get out of here? Yeah. No. <laughs> no, it doesn't work like that. A, sorry. Hey, man, I love your show. Anyway, here's your uh, ticket. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You got too much integrity. That's a good thing, but <laughs> not when I'm getting a ticket. I you know, know what I mean? That's annoying. I Dude, are you guys here? The, did you guys read the report, not report, the article on uh, what airlines 
are toying with right now? This it popped in my feed, but I haven't had a chance to read it, so please. Dude, this no, is, what, they're what's way, happening? They're way, this idea is going to float like a freaking rock in the ocean. I like it's, it. I, think. It's, it's, I haven't read it. so <laughs> Okay, so Ooh, I'm excited. they're toying it? with the idea of weighing passengers. Because, okay, so it's oh important. Oh, my God. This is not going to backfire at all. No, because the the obviously they, they, they know how many people go on the plane based yeah. off of average weight. Obviously, the weight of your luggage, we all know they make a big deal about that, right? Because right. it's safety, it's gas, it's how they profit, right? If there's more weight on the plane, they make less money because it takes more fuel to whatever. Yeah. So they're going to weigh people, and I think what they're doing first is to kind of get a general idea of how much they're their passengers way and then i think they may raise either raise the price of all tickets or discount for being light i don't <laughs> think you know what that would never wow. that would never go over i'm going on a cut now yeah it doesn't work because where it's really not fair is the the 250 pound lean guy or girl oh yeah. you know what i'm saying like that sucks i don't give look here's a deal and okay? then mm -hmm. if you go base off weight then you could technically be someone who's like you could be look, obese at 150 look here's you know the saying? deal imagine if you were in uh i don't know you're in vietnam and you're gonna go pay a rickshaw dude you know those things that the guy yeah he runs with uh -huh. and he looks at and you that's goes, what's called a rickshaw i think it's called it a rickshaw. am i right doug? Yeah. yeah i didn't know that. that's correct doug yep. knows this stuff so <laughs> imagine you, you're about you're about to get in there and the guy looks at you and he goes oh man you're like really heavy i don't know if i could do this. you would understand really like, yeah well, fuck i mean well, he's he's the one dragging your yeah. or he goes you know it's gonna cost you a little bit more yeah yeah why oh because it's a lot of work to pull your you know big old you know muscle ass or whatever i get it look you're paying them to fly you somewhere it makes sense but now here's here's where i want to go right yeah, but how much gas are they actually like you know in comparison probably, uh, probably a lot bro you think like well i mean think about it if you could if you could reduce the weight of every passenger by 10%. Imagine what, and then times that by how many flights a day that each airline does, times that by a year. Right. It could be potentially it's a hundreds of thousands of maybe even millions of dollars. It's a competitive market. Their margins are not That's massive. Right. People right. think, oh, they make something. No, they don't. They're very competitive. And so they're always trying to find ways to-, to I just see discrimination lawsuits uh, everywhere. Yes, and, and thin, thin privilege, which yeah. is hilarious. Well, because even before that, it was the whole two, you have to buy two seats. Because you know your body is too wide. I don't disagree with that. Do Which, you? No, I no. don't disagree with that. Yeah, I'm just, just saying that, yeah. like, like that. That was something that I'm sure there was already lawsuits about that. No, no. to try and go oh, in this okay, direction. That's what you're is, saying that because now, they had lawsuits. Now here's it. the deal: when they were doing that, when they were saying, "Hey, look, you're 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 big. You need to buy two tickets." Yeah. I didn't see any bodybuilders complain, right? Because they would also have to buy two tickets. But I think it's because they take it differently. You know what I'm saying? Like, imagine Adam. Right. You're about to get on the plane. Like, hey. You're too big, bro. You got to buy a two tickets. Okay, oh, man. <laughs> All right. Jeez. I'll buy it. You know what I mean? It's like tax on my gains. Yeah, I'm sorry. My lats. I know I got to get a ticket for my lats. Who know? did we fly out here that re that requested uh, first class? What bodybuilder? We had a bodybuilder oh, that was like, oh, I yes. only fly first class. Uh, was, it, was it Sean Ray? A little bit of a prima donna. Was it Sean Ray? Uh, no, I don't think was it was it, Sean. it wasn't Flex. It or was it no? Because Flex? Flex was here. He's here, isn't he? Oh, well, someone who didn't. One. They ended up not coming because no, no, they came. They still came. I think we had. A, I, I think, think we, it was Sean Ray, dude. Was it? I think so. Yeah, it wasn't uh, Mountain Dog or any of those. No, guys, no, no. It right. was it. I, I think it was Sean Ray. I can't remember who it was. Yeah. but I do remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. listen to this guy. So, so, so here's where I think <laughs> first class. Okay. Now, okay, obviously, if you tell people we got to weigh you, uh, and right now it's voluntary, but at some point, if they end up saying we got to make this a mandatory thing, we're gonna charge more. They're going to encounter this whole like fat shaming and thin privilege and blah, blah, blah type of argument. Yeah. So here's how I think the airlines are going to spin it. Because if you're in the airlines, right, you got to be smart. Like, okay, how do we present this in a way where we can't get fucked with? Because we want to weigh people. It makes sense. But now people are going to get offended and whatever. So here's, here's what I think they're going to say. Oh. I think they're going to pin it on uh, climate change. I think they're going to say... We're trying to produce we're, less carbon, we're saving, yeah, and oh. and because heavier people make us pr no, they're burn more gas. Companies will spin, uh, you know, all you these think politics. So? I think yeah. that's the best way to spin it. Like, yeah. how are you going to spin? You got people complaining about, you know, uh, you're fat shaming us. Right. I got to spin it to climate change. Oh, yeah. oh, you know, I'm sorry about think that, but about we're trying the to save greater the earth. issue. Yes, right. That's my. That's what I would do. That's not a. That's not a bad idea. If I work for their, their I still think they're getting. I still think you get in the same trouble though. Yeah. I don't know if you get out of this one now. Right now, it's all speculation, or is there some people that are piloting this? They're piloting no it, and it's going to be a voluntary thing first to start with. So what does that mean? It's, it's, voluntary. Yeah, exactly. Like I get on. Like, hey, can we weigh you? You know. Oh, yeah. And I then see. people be like, uh, okay. I mean, I, okay. So if you made it voluntary. 
I don't think heavy people are going to And say yes. if they did a thing like this, where if you, you get price reductions, that's for a, being this is how I would structure it. Yeah. Okay. It's a voluntary thing. Yeah. Based off of like a height, a height thing. If you weigh under a certain amount, you get a discount. Mm. Yeah. You, what you do is you roll out like we're, 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 we're charging it, we're charging more if it's across the board. If it's voluntary but you can, and you get a discount. Yep. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, you're discriminating. Yeah, it's still discriminating. Yeah, you are. Yeah, it's, yep. you're still fucked. That's a, you're so yeah. woke, dude. That's, the, <laughs> that's thin privilege, Adam. The, the wokest. <laughs> you're so By woke. the way, none of us would get He's that discount. He's alive and awake. <laughs> I know. I know. We would not get that discount. No, I, I dude. I, I also wouldn't care. Whatever. I'm already on the list for Kaiser. Yeah. You know, like they're trying to get me in one of those like uh, weight loss clinics. Yeah. What? They're after your fat ass. They've been after me, dude. Dude. Still, uh, yeah, you didn't bro. know that. Like, he, gets get, call, he gets calls. He gets like, calls. Like fast stuff in his mail yeah, all the time. I get mail. Like they're just like, when can we see you? This is an important issue. Are they? Uh, no, they they're not gentle. So you get you get uh, Doug gets the what is it the AARP stuff sent to him all the time, and you yeah. get you get fat loss stuff. Yeah. See, at least he's trying to get discount. Like, yeah. They're trying to like you know. Is that what, what is, is it AARP? Is that what it is, Doug? What's the what's the thing you start getting when you get old? Yeah, that's AARP. Yeah, mm -hmm. you get that a lot. Uh, a lot, yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. I started getting that stuff. Uh, Diners Club, you know, credit yeah. cards. Which brings us- But to that's great. I do get the discount. Well, yeah, this right? is why we always invite Doug to the movies. Yeah, you know, yeah exactly. For sure. Yeah, which was... brings us to our uh, the, yeah. our newest sponsor, thanks to Doug, uh, Depends. They actually- uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we don't work with Depends. Yes. And Doug doesn't wear Depends. Yeah. Except for when he's having fun. Relieve yourself anywhere. Yeah. Don't have to go to the bathroom anyway. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's going to be funny if they start waiting. So here's what I think. I think what they should do is, which, which this is what I would, again, is I would just- have because I know this exists, they would have cameras that could pretty closely estimate somebody's weight based off of their size or whatever, yeah. so that they could get better numbers. Because this is not going to fly, dude. There's no way, bro. <laughs> they start weighing people. Yeah, yeah. No, no, you're way. right. I think I no think matter how, you, no matter how, you, even if you do, you, think of how self conscious people are going to be. Like, oh my god, yeah. Oh my god, we finally are going to Hawaii, honey. I'm so excited. And then they weigh you and like, oh, you're people a little crash dieting. You're a little heavy va yeah. vacation. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like, come on, exactly. Dude. <laughs> it's gonna be, it's gonna be terrible. <laughs> Why'd you eat so much on vacation? Well, before <laughs> I got on the plane, <laughs> they made me feel terrible. I'm Angry, like slaps it out of their head. No, we need to get weighed. What are you thinking, <laughs> babe? Babe, what the fuck? Hungry. Yeah, this ain't gonna Just fly. This everywhere. ain't gonna fly. It ain't working. I don't. I don't see it going anywhere. Uh, no, it. it's hilarious, dude. I watched the uh, um, that documentary. Oh, I guess it is like a Generation little, Hustle. Yes, yeah. that you sent over to me last night. So I watched almost all of those. I, there's two that I didn't watch. Yeah, I've watched two of them. That's all you've watched. Yeah, you have to watch. There's two that I'm gonna. I think tell it's called all. Scam with a Beat or yes. something like that. Scam oh. with a Beat. I haven't watched that one yet, bro. That's the one I told you guys about on the podcast. Yeah, mm -hmm. you, we didn't really talk into detail about it because you because we hadn't seen any of it. But I watched it uh, last night, and this fool is on video, okay, and he's like telling the world through his rap music. Yes, mm -hmm. so he so, makes songs. Oh yeah, so let me back up a little bit here. So there's a there's a whole underground scene and and cultural thing that's happening right now in hip hop, which is scam rappers. And basically what they do is they rap about the digital scams that they do. So they, and they, they teach you the techniques. They tell you how to do it through the rap. Yeah, like how to get credit card numbers, how to put them on new credit cards, how to get into people's accounts, scams you could do through social media. Wow. It's like, and the way they explained it is like these kids are not, uh, and these are, a lot of these kids are, you know, obviously in bad situations or whatever. Instead of holding people up with guns or selling drugs, they're like, "This is easier. It's harder to catch us. Right. We're not going to get shot. We're we're going to get into the scam business, and it's exploding." And what this kid does, by the way, he's smart as fuck. The Instagram scam. You ready? Get that from. Warning: What he is describing right now may be a crime. That's the easiest way to make money. Let me think of another one. Oh, okay. Yes. And, you know. You know. As I was watching it, I was so. Part of me was like enthralled with this kid's like he's a he's a hustler and I don't mean that in the, in, the, in the negative sense. I mean this kid, had he grown up in a different situation, he would be a millionaire entrepreneur at some point. Like right. he's he's his brain is incredible. The way he presents things is very incredible. He obviously grew up in a way that he went kind of the wrong way or whatever. Well, his dad was a hustler, taught him yeah. everything. Yeah, so he went and just built on top of that. It's cra it was crazy what I saw. I mean, the, the, the idea that these guys are able to... And so he gets away with it now because 
he's there's, teaching others. There's no, to, there's nothing illegal about uh, doing that. Yeah, there's nothing illegal about giving all the tools to to do theft or do those things. Just yeah. like you could, you could look up online how to rob. So did or, he get caught before? And no, then, no, uh, no. So he's never been caught. He's just telling them and dude, how to do this. And now he just tells people, bro, he, making millions of dollars, mm -hmm. scammed his way into a million dollar record label, bought his dad a house. All of these things and openly talking about this. And what he says in the interview is like, you, you, you won't be able to figure out who I am. Wow. He's covered his identity that well that he feels confident enough to sit there on a, on a documentary talking to the camera about all these scams. He breaks down this one that I think, is, I forget the name, he has names for all these scams. Is it, would you tell the Instagram one? Yeah, the flights, the oh, Dubai no. flights. Oh, no, no. So he's like, he's the, the, the interviewer is asking like, you know, give me, an, uh, give me an example of like scams. He's like, because he's like, they work 100, always, 100%, guaranteed it'll work. I could do it right now, right in front of you. And she's like, okay, well, give me a, give me a scam that, that's easy to do. He goes, okay. Go find a uh, Instagram model that has millions of followers. Oh, yeah, one, yeah. Rip all of her all of her pictures. Restart a whole new account. Go buy for you know thirty fifty bucks or whatever it costs for fake followers. So you instantly have. So you, you look know, like you're real. So you look like you're real right away. Within a couple hours, you'll already have thirsty dudes that are DMing you and sending stuff like that. Tell them that you'll go out to uh, Dubai with them, have them buy your plane tickets, and then block <laughs> them and never talk to them again. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, bro, works every time. So he, he gets you know his why flights that one paid works? for. He gets, he does all this shit. Oh, you know why that brilliant. one works so well? Because if you're that dude, you ain't telling anybody. No, no. you're you're not reporting that you got scammed by somebody. You're, yeah. you're like, fuck. You feel embarrassed. Like, I guess you know, yeah. I deserve it. Or all whatever. a lot of the scams. She told me she loved me. <laughs> A lot of the scams are exactly that, are are these things that they work so well because, you know, the people that get scammed are kind of like, fuck, I should have known better. Yeah, I shouldn't like, have. I, ah, I, they willingly me. give their money or their information up. And so, hmm. and then the way he justifies it, right? Because they start to question him, like, <laughs> you feel bad and this and that. He's like, listen, it's I'm taking someone's credit card information. If I go out and spend $10,000 on the, their credit card that I scammed them out of, they report that to their credit card company. They get the money back from that. It's like, who am I really scamming? Who am I really hurting? So, yeah. well, it, it, okay, you know, mm. here's, you know, there's some, there's, he's really, he's Robin Hood. He, yeah, and that's know, no. <laughs> well, there's an economic <laughs> yeah. trickle down effect that happens. <laughs> yeah, that's false. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so somebody somebody, gets hurt. Yeah, somebody, we, so we get hurt the from system. That. Yeah. yeah, credit cards charge higher interest rates. That's right. It's harder to get credit. It's harder to, to buy things, the cost that goes into improving security mm -hmm. gets passed down to the consumer. So we do pay for it. It's not like nobody pays for it. This you're still stealing, also, but yeah. but it, it is quite brilliant to see how he does this. And again, as I watch, I'm like, fuck! If this kid, what was the other scam you were thinking? Dude, of? Grew up the right way. It was that one. Oh, it was. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah no, I just thought that was. He gave another one. I can't remember where the other one was, but he lays it out. In the in the wraps, like everything down to like how you where, how you get onto the dark web, what websites, what browser you use. And then use. what he does is he sells these guides yes. that are like give you specifics. So you listen to his rap songs and like, oh shit, he's the god of scams. He's like, buy my, you know, and he'll name the, the scam and you'll buy his guides for however much. And so that's where he's making his money. And check this out. So he's, and imagine this, Smart. like the, the rap is not even good, right? It's like, it's barely. No, it's, it's like offbeat. Yeah, it's offbeat, whatever. But because he's blowing up and it's this growing thing and so many people are, are he got, he's got record labels in his DMs like crazy trying to sign him because just because he's got so much clout in this in this growing space. Yeah. And so he gets a record deal yeah. for like ten million dollars. So he sets that up and structures it in a way so that he's legitimate from a record deal. And that's what he obviously probably used mm -hmm. to buy his dad's house. Which by the way he tells at the end of the um, spoiler alert on this one, just, just still go watch it. There's so much in there. Is he tells him that the record label, that's not even his legit name. And he's buying shit with with that that name and everything. Wow. Crazy. Yes. Wow. Yeah, well, smart. since we're talking about HBO, you know, it's funny. I was watching. Uh, I'm watching this series on Netflix. I watched the whole thing. I think it's called Jupiter Rising. It's a pretty cool superhero series, but it's got a lot of twists to it, so it's pretty fun. And I re and I also go on HBO Max and watch some of their stuff. And mm -hmm. and so I had this kind of this thought process of the 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 two ways that these. Because what's happened now, and I remember back in the day when we debated what would happen with uh, with entertainment, and it, it turns out that it is moving in this direction where you, where networks are just going to pop up, they're going to compete, they're going to have their own programming, mm -hmm. then and eventually they'll bundle with uh, other ones. Maybe right, but you you have lots of different you know Hulu and, yeah. and now YouTube Red and you know uh, Netflix. That was HBO my Netflix. theory, Justin. Yeah. Sal was the one who actually thought it was going to be all a cart like it is right yeah. now, and so. it's gonna it's just going to keep growing that way. But anyway. What we see, there's two very distinct models, right? Mm -hmm. One is the Netflix binge model. They'll drop 
a series, all the episodes. The other model HBO does where they trickle the episodes. So they'll drop one. You got to wait till next week yep. before it releases. Amazon does. Apple does that too. Yeah. And course. Amazon does the same thing. Yeah. And I'm like, ah, oh, which one's better? Like one of them makes me binge, you know, and the other one, you know, it, it takes a lot, low, a lot longer. I think the trickle model is better mm -hmm. because I noticed that when a series that I like is done on Netflix, if there's no other series I'm immediately interested in, I stop visiting right. Netflix. But because when I like a particular series on HBO, I'll keep visiting it to check to see if the episode's up, and it just gets me well, to their site more yeah, often. Yeah, and, and the quality. You know, you could you could see the stark contrast of that. Both approaches, you see a higher quality when you're getting it oh, trickled yeah. in versus the other one. It's it, Again, once you consume the whole thing, you could do it in a day, mm -hmm. a lot of these series. And so then what's next? What's next? What's next? And it's like, you know, they're on they're on the, the clock to produce that for everybody. And it's not always the best. Well, I, I look at it, I, I like the analogy of it, it being like food. It's just you've got, you know, fast food and junk food, which is like Netflix and, you know, stuff that people binge on and just mindlessly eat. And then you have like a fancy $200 steakhouse place mm -hmm. that is like, you know, you don't do that every single day and eat like crazy. Mm -hmm. It's something that you enjoy slowly. So mm -hmm. I kind of look at it like it's, there are a bunch of, now I see it like that. Like it's a bunch of different restaurants and it's like what appeals to that person. Maybe at that time. So maybe there's times when you're like, oh, I'm sick and I'm laying around all day. Like what a great time to binge on Netflix, like a whole you know, a whole season of something yeah. versus, oh, you know, I really, this is my show. I watch yeah, every my wife Friday. And I like at, to watch this yeah, Friday at seven o'clock. So yeah, it's definitely a different model. It's interesting because what we're seeing right now, and this is beautiful, right? Because it's relatively unregulated. So they're just able to compete with each other is they're starting to develop their own flavors. They're starting to develop their own, you know, the programming is coming out, their brands. So you can start to see them compete in this way. And it's very interesting. Like, Hulu feels very different than, you know, Amazon and that feels very different than HBO and it feels mm -hmm. very different than Netflix and YouTube. And so it's really, really cool to watch. I'm really enjoying all of this. And it's funny, people will, they'll tell me, in, especially in the past when I was making that argument, like, oh, it's going to be way more expensive. No, it's not. It's only more expensive because you want yeah. access to everything. Yeah. The truth is just Netflix, just Netflix alone gives me way more, uh, it's just so many more options of things to watch than I had five years ago oh, or 10 years ago on, yeah. on, on you know, network TV. We were just talking about this this weekend, my best friends and I, because we all were, uh, I don't know if you guys were into, I collected like video cassettes when I was a kid, right? We were like, and you know, you're a kid buying a, you know, $25 video cassette or whatever like that would, you know, I couldn't buy that all the time. So I had this collection of like 50 video cassettes when I was like a 16 year old kid or whatever like that. And I mean, I must have watched. That's like a thousand bucks right there. Well, right I mean, there. and I, and I must have watched those same, you know, twenty video uh, cassettes a million times. A million times, and I, I, you know, can remember every weekend looking at them, like, oh, which one I'm gonna? Oh, I haven't watched this yeah. one in a couple of weeks. I'm gonna watch that like one. Big Lebowski or Memento? And yeah. I have, and I have such a, <laughs> one or the other. <laughs> it's so true. I had such a hard time now with all the con. There's so much that I find myself. There's nothing on. <laughs> there's nothing to watch. I feel like there's more that, there's more to watch than you ever have before, but now I still feel like I don't yeah, have Yeah, so if watch. you spend a lot, it's because you have access to like a billion things to watch. <laughs> In fact, I could see a some I could see a market uh like like a market demand for a an effective searching tool or function to find cuz I could literally if I if I allow myself, I could spend 45 minutes figuring out what and i'm like and, and it pisses off jessica she's like what the f we're supposed to watch something it's spending yeah that's the part that irritates me. yes yeah because it's like i know there's good shows out there but i don't always know which platform it's on or you know how to find them or it doesn't get the marketing part of it so even with movies like i don't get i don't see trailers for movies anymore because it's like you're just i know this show's on i'm gonna just watch this and it's like you don't really know what else is out there so that i don't know how they're gonna end up handling that in the future well, a huge demand. Do you, for well, it. do you guys have Apple TV or no? Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. So Apple TV does this, right? So they've got It'll search different. Well, what they so if I go into my Apple TV app, it actually has Showtime, HBO, Epics. Um, you know, I forget. Obviously, it doesn't have Prime, Netflix as competitors, but it has a lot of these other Disney right. has all of them in there, and they all are based off of my algorithm of what I show. So I on one homepage, I can see like the five trending things on Showtime that would mm. appeal to me. I can see like the five things on Disney that would appeal to me. 
So I mean, they're they're getting they're very you're getting very sophisticated with the algorithm. Yeah, but on it's how still to feed not. It to you. It's still not like great, right? I feel like at some point it's going to be more like social media, where you're going to connect to people that you have similar likes to, yeah. And then based off of other people's recommendations, like I know for certain types of films, Justin is going to give me good advice. Like if I want to watch sci-fi. And I asked Justin, Justin, what's a good new site? Like, I, I'll trust his uh, you right. know, review versus right. some random person. Right. I feel like there's a lot of value there. I just don't know how they're going to make like that. Like a social interactive yeah. thing? I'm yeah. sure there's something. There's demand the, for that for sure. I'm sure there's something. You know what I want to know is, so, and I don't know if there's other, how many of these, these streaming services are doing this, but we talked to, on one of the last episodes, we talked about how much we trust the, the reviews. And I just watched something that had, you know, 4.5 and it was, Awful, mm. and instead it had a thousand reviews. There is no way that that thing got. So I'm wondering now too is how many of these these places are starting to hack that and pay for positive reviews. That's what get, I mean. Mm. Like it could be a bunch of kids that yeah. are watching this thing, or people that I, that I don't have similar like like Netflix does. This. Did you see that? top ten? And then I'm I'm looking. I'm like, did yeah, you for, see yeah, that for who? Did yeah. you guys <laughs> see that post that Robert Ogers did the other day about no. the top ten on Netflix? No, he it said uh, the it was a meme and it said uh, nothing makes me feel more disconnected in our society than the top my top ten list of Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> and so I was I, felt, I was like I remember going on there. I'm like these are <laughs> yeah. not what I would yeah, rank top ten. Dude, I watched a movie on Amazon, uh, Paper Tigers. I think it was. It's like a martial art comedy or whatever. I saw and, that. It looks and, bad. and the trailer was like, made me go, oh, it's going to either suck or <laughs> it might be funny. It might yeah. be actually good. The review was great. It got great stars or whatever on Amazon. So I freaking rented that shitty ass movie. <laughs> and I only watched half of it because my hard headed nature is like, it's going to get better. So that's exactly. Get better. Okay, that no, was, it didn't get better. That was Amazon, right? Yes. So that, okay, that was one. Okay, there was like three, Paper Tigers and then the, this, I forget the name of this other one that I watched. And all of them had a thousand reviews and they were like 4.5. I almost watched that one. I chose the other one. And the other one was terrible too. Yeah. So something's going on with Amazon with their reviews on their movies saying that they're ranked way better than what they really are. Because I watched, I, you just now confirmed that the other one I almost watched that had high reviews that I was like, this does not look that good. How That's what I mean. That yeah. I feel like there's such a, like there would be, a, at some point we're going to see a game changing algorithm or way of recommend because seriously there's fatigue there's yeah. search fatigue almost now. like a, a streaming guide like a you know there's somebody that that sort of either it's a person that has a podcast yeah. or has like just devoted to that like exclusively or something like well, that. that that's actually popular there's a lot yeah. of podcasts that that's what they do yeah. Yeah, that's all they do is review. Do, you, do you guys remember tv guide remember that when we were kids yeah, yeah. that's how you found shit back in the yeah, day dude well even just okay so uh, some of these like so spectrum i guess is like uh, one of those kind of like who things but we, it's like super old school but uh you know there's something to just staying in one place and then like scrolling scrolling oh yeah that and it has all the networks listed out like it's easier mentally mm. you know there's something to that you guys gotta watch uh i know it's animated i think i brought it up but i'm gonna say it again uh mitchell versus the machines you have to watch it did you guys like spider-man into this the spider verse or whatever did oh yeah like that, that cartoon yeah yeah i did okay like that a lot. really smart right really, cool. really creative yeah. really entertaining really cool. mitchell versus the machines I promise you, you'll watch mm. it and you'll love what's it. What's it on? What's what's what? Uh, it's on Netflix. Oh, it's Netflix, and it's the same creators so nice. of the Spider Man into the Spider Verse or whatever. Oh yeah, you know I like that. Really, really well made. It was really, really interesting. So that 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 zombie movie I brought up the other podcast was was Zack Snyder. So the one that, uh, but it know, sucked. But it sucked, dude. I'm I, hey, sorry. And it got all these good reviews. I'm like, get out of here with those reviews. Like, <laughs> like honestly, I like know. I mean, it, it was high. You know, budget. They 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 went all out, and and there was violence and all that kind of stuff. But it just was like you'll see if you watch it and you don't listen to me, that's fine. Ah, that sucks. I, well, I, all right. Speak, I don't blame speaking you. of algorithms and stuff like that, I just read this like study. Uh, I you know sometimes I think to myself, who the fuck is funding some of these studies? I don't understand. But anyway, there was a study on AI, and the 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 paper essentially was like when AI gets like really intelligent how are humans going to compete with AI? And at the end of the study, the result is AI is going to kick our ass. Now, it's this, I always think to myself, like, why are you funding stupid shit like this? <laughs> like, what's the next study going to be? Thanks. You know, we did. We actually spent a million dollars to see what would happen if we put our hand in a fireplace and uh, it burned. <laughs> it's burned. It burned our hand. Write, yeah. So write according, that down. according to this, the, the authors are like, yeah, they would outcompete us in pretty much anything. And because they're smarter and they, they don't run out of energy. I'm like, oh, yeah. 
No shit, dude. Is that gonna, you guys think that's going to happen in our lifetime? Are we going to see? I mean, are we going to like go well, into like places to go I'm shopping thinking, and it's going to be like all AI that's serving you and taking care of you? Is I it? think it'll be different than what people think. I think I think they're going to sort of contain, they're going to try really hard to contain AI. So that way it has like different uh, industries and different aspects where that's its exclusive knowledge is like, you know, within to, to make everything more efficient, you know, with shipping or to make everything, you know, like, again, what we were talking about with the streaming service maybe there's an ai that just like you know figures you out and then presents it to you specifically like that, that's what i think too like, i mean, I think when people hear ai they automatically think of like yeah. irobot or like, or, like you know, or like terminator yeah, yeah they think of that but that's, that's not where like we're, we're, we're like we're building towards ai within this business right so on the back end of the business we have uh you know the crm that's called hubspot and Right now, I mean, we've been doing this for the last year and a half now where every time we have questions, we gather that, we, we template it out mm -hmm. and, you know, we start to categorize like all these similar type questions so that in the future, somebody could literally just type in and then AI can respond to them like, oh, try this or maybe this or maybe that. And if we get enough of this data, it should be really accurate to what that person's searching for I with think, all the content. I think we have. we're going to see a lot of weird stuff in our lifetime for sure because the uh, the rate we of advancement. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, <laughs> I mean, lots of weird things. You're right. Happen, the rate of advancement is accelerating. Yeah. So you know, ten years now is what you you know twenty years used to be in terms of change and innovation. I mean, come on, let's. The iPhone. When was the iPhone first launched? When was the first one, Doug? Was it, it was look that up for me. Do you know that he almost didn't do that too, right? What the yeah, launch of the iPhone? Steve Jobs did not want to do a phones. You know that? Do you know originally that that was it was uh, the way they convinced him was that uh, Microsoft was doing tablets and let's make a competitive tablet that basically can also make calls. Oh, I see. But mm -hmm. he didn't want to get into the phone business whatsoever. Two thousand seven, right? So this you know 13, 14 years ago. The first iPhone, look like look how far and how much that that particular phone or smartphones has changed society in that short of a period of time. It's mm -hmm. insane. Yeah. So I think we're going to see shit like that. Uh, I think the biggest, uh, the first one that's going to blow everyone's mind in terms of how much it changes society. 3D printers. Uh, no, oh. I, I I think yes, but I don't think that's going to happen before uh, self driving cars. When you bring oh, up yeah. stuff like that, I always think about what what would happen because of things like this. So you guys know that at the same time. BlackBerry was a 50 or a 70 billion dollar company. Yeah. And then just gone. Gone. Like yeah. literally gone because of something, some innovation like that Com comes in, Crazy. makes it completely This is why I'm not obsolete. worried about companies that crush and everybody's so afraid of them. Oh my gosh, they control everything. Blah, blah. Like the only thing I don't like is when government creates barriers around them to yeah, protect they them. they subsidize it. But if know, they're, so they can't fail. But if they're in the market, I'm like, well, okay, good for them. But you know, like you did, you brought that up the other day about the Forbes, the top 500 companies. Mm -hmm. How many of them are still there, you yeah. know, 40 years later? That's right. It'll, it'll turn over. It'll turn over. So, but I think the, the self-driving cars will be the first big like massive change everything event and then from there we'll see you know we'll end up seeing what yeah what happens well speaking of technology so i uh we're i'm always curious and have been paying attention to a lot of fitness trackers and all that kind of stuff you know forever and uh, i never bring up strava because strava is a little bit more you know mm -hmm. specifically to cyclists and runners uh but uh, it uh, I ran across this article and it was talking about, you know, kind of a crazy thing that happened because Strava allows you to, you know, map your runs and they have sort of like a heat map on the globe of like where you've been and like everybody's kind of competing with whatever run that you've done before. So I guess like there, a lot of people in the military use Strava. And so like, and, it, and it's all taking all this data and all this stuff. So they got in trouble because it was revealing, you know, some secret oh. bases in, in different locations where maybe, you know, that country didn't even know, uh, you know, we had troops in. So, Oh, interesting. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that, that became like an immediate, like, Oh, yeah, like a big problem. Wow. You know, you just made me think of is, uh, what a great strategy by another com a country to you know, figure things out. Just create an app that people mm. use, and now you gather information on them, and it's all through just selling a <laughs> I product. Be, I wouldn't yeah. be surprised yeah. that already yeah. happens. Just like uh, when we changed our face to being old, 
You know, yeah, the, you know, that Russian app. Why, why Strava? Why is, I've, al I've always hated that name. It sounds like a coffee shop. It doesn't sound like a running app to me. I, yeah, Do you know good. where the name comes from by chance? What no, does Strava it, mean? Doesn't it sound like a coffee shop to you? That's what it sounds It doesn't sound like a running app. We'll have a Strava Chino. Yeah, doesn't it? It, <laughs> it, it sounds like that to me. I don't know why I think that. We're just talking shit about the Doug, name. what do you think? Yeah. It comes from the Swedish word strive. Ah. Mm, okay. Yeah, strive. Makes, now I like it. Yeah. yeah. Now it works. Yeah. I still don't like it. Yeah, still, sounds like like it. still sounds like yeah. coffee to me. Yeah. Do you guys ever hear a word or a name that you don't like, but then because it's spelled a certain way, you like it all of a sudden. This mm. this happened this morning. Where like I was, what? Well, I was talking to a friend of uh, friend of mine. They're going to have a, a, a baby girl, and they were talking about names that they want to name the baby. Uh. And Margot was one of the names. Now, I don't necessarily. Sorry if your name is Margot. Okay, but it's not. I was like, I don't know if I like that name. So I'll hate you. But then they said. <laughs> but then I realized that they're spelling it M A R G O T, and I'm like, oh, I like the way that looks. Now I like the names. Ever happened to you guys? Margot. Uh, no, no so it's so French. Margot. Margot. Yeah. Margot. Yeah. Yeah. Are you guys like that? Or am I the only weirdo? In you here? are definitely weird on that. I mean, mm. maybe. I just can't think of examples. Yeah, like we're adding a letter. All of a sudden, makes you like it more. Just the the the, the aesthetic of the way it looks it uh -huh. makes it. You know. Yeah, no? Yeah. Am I the only one? <laughs> yeah, 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 that's it. You're all alone on this conversation, hey, you, guy. You know, when I met Jessica, when we first started dating, she had a, she's going to be so embarrassed, she had a notebook of words that she just, she would like a word, like the way it looked, and she'd write, write it down. Oh, bro, it's, this is one of the reasons why I fell in love with her. Really? Like, oh, yeah. Like, that's interesting. I'm like, you you like words? <laughs> Does she write Take poetry her or anything? Um, she's written a lot of stuff in the past, but she's she, like me. We both are kind of yeah. weird with that kind of stuff. And I like the way certain words. Well, look. some of them like sound eloquent and, you know, and, and, and I always pay attention like somebody like a Jordan Pearson that uses words I've never heard. Yeah. I'm just like, oh my God, I got to remember that. And I never do. Yeah. Cause it's just, no, I, when I listen to him talk, I always have like my notepad out and I'm like, yeah. well, I got to write, I got to look that up later. Cause I have no idea what he just said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's almost every time I listen to that man speak, he says a, a, a word that I have never heard before. Just but blew. then you'll get somebody like as an example what's that guy's name the 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 english um, um comedian who's like very like russell uh i forget his brand. last name russell brand thank oh, you yeah, yeah. who just his whole thing is to try and, and push in all these eloquent words and then you're like what the fuck are you talking about mm, you yeah. know the whole thing just sounds like this whimsical you know diary of words yeah no i know exactly what no, that's you know a, what i mean that's annoying when someone it's, does yeah, it. it's, it's like, obnoxious like it, it took you 20 seconds to say something that would take it, you 5 seconds condense that down that's when it's annoying yeah. when when words are used effectively i think it's awesome it's very attractive it's uh it's 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 great but when you're just doing it to make a word salad because you know I want to tell you that I'm going to the bathroom but word I end up salad, telling you this yes. big freaking story I, you know you know who yeah. the fitness space does this oh, a lot oh my god uh, yes. you're you're the you're, academics yes the oh, academics geez. in our space love to take just, something just sniff in their farts in, just, yeah and the mother just, I abduction of the too. humerus yeah. in the horizontal plane is flexion mm. of the pectoralis major and they're like what yeah. you did, all you had to say was bring your arms <laughs> together bro yeah. are you yeah. serious like that's you did, did you really need to say that yeah. and like how many people 100%. how many people really understood what you said know your it's, audience yeah. yeah no you know the only time you want to know what's funny the only time all the that terminology and Latin and all that stuff. When I was doing a doctor, when yes. I had a doctor or somebody yes. in my field that had a higher education than me, that was my way of letting you know, like, hey, I know stuff. I know what I'm talking <laughs> about. I know stuff too, yeah. in case you're wondering. That's it towards, I, I had a lot of doctor clients at <laughs> one point, and it's then I would, I'd be like, cool, yeah. I get to use this. That's this the language. only time. That's the only time. And then they were like, oh yeah. You no, you know, know the ironic thing that happened to me all the time. Like, you, I ended up getting corrected. Actually, Adam, you're using that incorrectly. Yeah, that's, <laughs> the, that's the tibial <laughs> tuberosity. <laughs> it doesn't move that way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's uh, that's. Yeah. Not the attachment of that particular muscle. That's right. actually the insertion. Oh, uh, fuck. What the hell's going on? No. no it, it, you see that in fitness because the academics who create the studies that are valuable, uh, they I think that they over they overestimate their own values. Who are who are your favorite communicators in the fitness space? Mm. When you think of people that you like Joe DeFranco does a good. Yeah, job. no, I was gonna say him. Joe DeFranco does uh, Joe Joe DeFranco knows his him and, and Smitty, his partner, right, with their CPPS. Yeah. They know their shit better than almost anybody, okay, when it comes yeah, to biomechanics, all the fat out of movement, their presentation. but when they present it, they're doing it in a way so that it's effective. So they're not just trying to sound smart. They are, but they do it in a way that's So Joe effective. does that really well. I think Mike Matthews does this really well, too. Mike does a good job. Yeah, Mike's mm -hmm. a very, very intelligent guy, well-read, yeah. and I think that he- He's not a fitness academic, though, necessarily. Yeah. It's not his-, his uh, he, le he learns a lot on his own, but he's not like- I mean, that's just it, though. I mean, I, th I think for somebody who doesn't have 20-plus years in the fitness space- Oh, he, impressive. He, he communicates yes. it as 
if he did, you yeah. know. So I, I think he's, he's also just generally a very intelligent guy. Yeah, and a great communicator, period, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah. even if we're ta- even if we're I'm talking economics with him or politics with him, he's a good communicator. I would say PJ performance. Uh, oh yeah. He's very, very clear and, and concise, but like brings up very um you know complicated uh subject matter and, and has the studies and everything to back it. Yeah, yeah, who are you it's like who are you talking to? Are you talking to a classroom full of you know, PhD students, in which case you talk a certain way, or are you talking to the average person who's trying to get them to improve their fitness? Mm-hmm. In which case, like, use the right language. Speaking of Mike, I got to apologize, Doug, for uh, stealing your uh, pre workout over there. So <laughs> <laughs> I found out afterwards, uh, I got home and, and Katrina, and Katrina, like, always has like this bag of stuff that I'm supposed to bring back to the studio, whether it's got to get to Jerry or somebody else. And she's like, you need to go return this to Doug. I'm like, why? He can get his own. She's like, that was his. Like, he specifically <laughs> asked for the non-stim green oh, apple to be yeah. shipped to the studio. Yeah. And I don't I don't even like the non-stim. I just saw the green apple, and I just grabbed it because it's my other favorite well, flavor. So I, he actually has the best non-stimulant uh, pre-workout that I've tried. Uh, Doug loves it. Yeah. I love it. And it tastes the, amazing. Yeah, the challenge with non-stim is you still want to feel... Some Something kind of thing from it. Yeah, like I, I'm not just taking it to taste a you know fruity drink or whatever. I'm taking it because I want to have improved performance. I want to notice a little bit more focus. But th- so traditionally, the way you do that is with stimulants like caffeine. But he's done it with the formula that's in, you know it's got alpha GPC. Um, he's got some other beta alanine in there and some other things. And you actually do get this kind of energy boost, but without the without the stimulus. Now, Doug, do you uh, do you only use the non stim, or do you back and forth? Like, how, what's your no, caffeine? only the non stim when I use a pre workout. So I've been kind of going back and forth between that and Element mm. as my pre workout. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, you, you I don't know, mix the two though. You know, you could drink Element during your workout. You don't have to do it uh, as a pre workout. Just drink. Well, it no, I do. I do it during my. Workout, oh, yeah. I see. Okay, or yeah. both. I mean, for yeah. the, that, that's not something that conflicts at all. Oh, uh, what if you mean mixing them together? No, no, not like well, literally mixing them together. That's what but I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll mix all kinds of. Yeah, shit well, together. at least in that formulation, you get benefits from. It. But like, say you're just doing it with decaf coffee or something like that, you're gonna have to like convince me that's like you know that's <laughs> Doug. <dude. laughs> Doug's like, big decaf coffee guy. Where's too. the yeah. uh, benefit there? Yeah, but there if I do the regular pre workout, I use half the dose. Oh, so mm. you will sometimes. Sometimes, very rarely, but when like I when, do, when I always... somebody takes your non-stim, yeah. yes, yeah. it's got to be like <laughs> somebody or yeah. steals it. Yeah. Doug's sensitive to stimulants. Uh, you like are I too. Am. You, yeah. yeah, you got your because I'm you... less. I'm less sensitive than he is. He's even more. Doug, Doug I'm very sensitive. Doug yes. goes over 150 milligrams or something. I remember this from when mm. I used to train him. Uh, he would it would affect his sleep and he would start to feel shaky or whatever, like less performance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and that's good to know about yourself because I, I you know you read studies on caffeine. Improves performance is very effective. Not if you have if you're too sensitive. To I was it, it den- does the opposite. I was in denial about it for a long time because I like caffeine so much and it makes mm-hmm. me feel good while I'm drinking it. Like not realizing how much it was affecting my sleep and mm-hmm. stuff. Like yeah. it took me a while to like Easy really to do. Yeah, yeah, real tough for me to like look you look at myself in the mirror and go like, hey, you know what? That's probably because hey, I had man. three of those it's, drinks today. Dude, caffeine's a drug, man, and you uh, need to be know this about yourself. Like my dose just does this. It just slowly creeps up, and mm-hmm. then I got to bring it down, which sucks and. If I don't pay attention to that, I'll be living on high caffeine all the time and having these afternoon crashes. Because that's what happens, right? I'll get the spike, and then by two o'clock, I'm. So, do you cycle yeah. the the non-stim with the the regular caffeinated uh, pre-workout, or do you go, you know, pre-workout and then no pre-workout? Like, how do you cycle? Through? Okay, so there's two options that I can do. One is I go from caffeine, and I wait until my dose gets up to about 300. For me, the the threshold's 300. Once I start needing 300 milligrams. That's when I start to. It's to a thousand for Justin. Okay. Those that are Please. wondering, Justin's yeah. like three hundred an hour. <laughs> yeah, fifteen hundred. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Justin, <laughs> let's ramp it up. Justin's like, when I have to start buying it by the pound, that's normally when I start to back yeah. off a little bit. He starts. Yeah, yeah. He, he 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 keisters it now. Apparently, yeah. it's faster absorbing. When, when I get really dark circles in my eyes. Yeah. No. I'm just like, oh shit. No. So so for me, it's three hundred milligrams. For other people, it's it's obviously a different dose. But once I get up to that, I have two options. One is cold turkey. Fucking suck. If I go cold turkey, I feel irritable. Which is so weird to me because you don't go very high. I feel like I feel like I can cut cold turkey and I go higher than you do. Yeah, no. Mm. I don't like the way I feel. I feel shitty. I feel unmotivated. I don't feel happy. It's literally like, oh, this sucks. After about four or five days of that, then I start to get back to normal. Then I start bringing it back in. I have magic. Yeah. Now, the reason why I typically don't do that is I hate dealing with that four or five days. We got to come in here and podcast and work, and I got my kids, and it's like, 
God, it makes everything just suck. So what I typically do is I just start to, I bring it down by about 50 milligrams or 100 milligrams a week. So I'll go 300, 250, 200, 150, 100. Then yeah. I'll stay at 100. Then I'll start bringing it back yeah, up. Yeah, I just, I bring the cups down. Like an all real, you know, being real, like I do, I do sort of taper it off when I start to feel, I get like a TMJ where I'm just like, oh, I'm just like, <laughs> wow. I'm just always like, That's you know, kind of grinding a bit. No, it's not from that. I'm nice from the what? Relaxed blow from jobs. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know how to work in that. But, um, <laughs> Get out of that one. Thanks. Three a day, man. No, dude. I, was, I, that, I will start, job. you know, adjusting and, and bringing it down, and, uh, uh, and then, but I reintroduce it. It's just kind of a cycle. Okay, so do you know what your milligram top is? I know we said a thousand, no, but let's I just... go by cups. Okay, so he's, I, dead or dead. Right, so yeah. what's your, he's like, I have three cups. It varies. Big. It's like that that lady used to train that would have like a glass of wine that was like a goblet. Yeah. You know? like, like that's what I do. Okay, so let's 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 get into this for a second. Okay. What is uh, how big is the cup typically? Okay, so the first one I mean is pretty normal. Like if let's say it's two shots of espresso. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it starts it's off a with regular two cup. Right? Okay. And then I which is what? Well, okay, let's we'll count the milligrams. Here. Two You're shots about one hundred and twenty-five. 120, okay. okay. And then I get into my nitro, which is you know yes. that, that's got to you know ramp up to what like three hundred. And or at what size is that? A grande, so twenty ounce. Holy shit! Yeah. All right, Doug, look that up. Look up uh, caffeine in a uh, grande nitro. Or that wait, I'm gonna, uh, yeah. I'm gonna guess so that's that, less. That, the, the 20 yeah. ounce. No, yeah. it's 300. What, what's it's probably 300 milligrams. Okay. 250 yeah. to 300. I would say 350 is what I would okay, guess. Okay, 350. Okay. So and now then, we're up to 500. So we got 500. So we're close to 500, right? Okay, yeah. so then I'll come in, uh, you know, if I feel in, uh, like I need more, I'll do another one. Another nitro? Yeah, another Same nitro, size? Same size. Holy Whoa! shit! That's nothing. All okay. right, anyway, okay. no, that's okay. 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 okay, we're warming up. Hold huh? on a yeah, second yeah, yeah. here. Let's see what it is. Okay, 280 oh, Okay, we can back okay. you down a little bit. So okay. 280 plus 125, so let's say 120, right? So yeah. you have 400. Okay. Plus another one, so that's another 280. So now you have 680. Okay. Okay. Right, and then some days I'll even add an energy drink on that. Like a rock star that yeah. we just had. <laughs> right. Those Which are 300. Like, no, 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 these, these are two... These like are like two, two, 250. Okay. Yeah, Justin has one down. So there. you're two. getting like 900 milligrams. Yeah, I told you. Now, here's what the audience thousand. doesn't know before you go try doing this and killing yourself. Please don't do this. <laughs> Justin uh, doesn't have, uh, don't you have like your adrenal gland or one of them removed? Yeah, I have one of them gone completely. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, and I blame Adam specifically. Yeah. <laughs> 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 he introduced me to speed stack I did. Uh, I in did. order to get me number one in the company guess what it worked yeah. uh but i'm paying the price <laughs> well, <let's say. laughs> completely what a dickhead by the way <laughs> so adam's like look how bad do you want to be number one yeah he's like here just, like he, he would actually have them ready you know just throw like, you? oh shit okay you know what, you know what was in the speed stack yeah. It was 200 milligrams of caffeine, 25, 25 milligrams of ephedra. Of ephedra alkaloids. And they had a bunch of other- like, And there was uh, aspirin in there yeah, also. Yeah. So it was ECA. Like monk fruit and all kinds of other shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. so it, got, it got me going. And you drink, what, three, four a day? Two, three, yeah, it depended. But yeah. And I would do coffee. Ephedra was the jam, dude. Yeah. I tell you what, man, you kids have no idea. Yeah. Ephedra was drugs. No, you know, crazy. we're laughing about this, but it's a good conversation. And then you because, got a tumor on his adrenal gland. Yeah, no, I mean, we're joking. <laughs> fucked up. All I joking know. aside- I, I think that was there before. But I, I, I got sucked into this because because there's all all the research around caffeine is is pretty positive. You know, it's you, true. Yeah, what you see today, there's not a lot of stuff. Now there was some stuff in the past where they tried to like scare you into thinking that oh, caffeine's bad for you, and then that stuff came out the counter and say oh, there's like positive health benefits because right, they kind of tied that in with cigarettes. Yes, right. So you know, most of the stuff that I was reading in my 20s related to caffeine, it was like oh no, look at I I could I referenced the study. Mm -hmm. Look at it says it's great for you to have this, and so just quickly justified you know the addiction going right. up and up and up so not really thinking about some of the side effects of that. Doug, but, why don't you look up how many There's uh, a healthy way to use How it, many though. emergency room visits are due to caffeine? Okay. So I want you guys you to go. see. There no, you know, no, you know what? You know it why? Kill, it kills yeah. a lot of people every no, day. It does because you look at the studies but what they don't tell you is the other side of it. If you caffeine is a fucking drug, it's got a, it'll definitely kill you if you have too much. Right. It can cause heart arrhythmias, it can mess up your hormones, especially in women when when I when I would train a client female with hormones all over the place. One of the first things I would do is start to lower and then reduce and well, then eliminate. This is where caffeine. that whole powder. Remember when when they came out with like powdered uh, caffeine and powdered alcohol? Like what a <laughs> terrible fucking idea! Yeah, look at, what does it say, Doug? Fifteen hundred ninety-two single exposures to caffeine-containing energy drinks in twenty eighteen. 
with six outcomes but no deaths, and then in oh no deaths, and then the AAPCC also reported 2,849 2, single exposures to caffeine as a street drug. Huh? Those are these are caffeine overdose numbers. Oh, okay. Uh, you yeah, got some guy in a so, trench coat, just you know. Well, but no deaths. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, it's hard. How do you? How do you like? Okay, I had a heart attack. I died of heart attack. You know, was it though? The caffeine really pushed that over the edge. Who yeah. knows? I mean, I, I'm not. Well, gonna that's disagree. It's tough dangerous. One you're, you're drawing there. Come on, you can't do yeah. that. Well, I mean, okay. It says zero, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So but you're still, fine, Justin. Yep. Push 2,000. Let's see what happens. Let's get you. Let's see. Now, we want right to be, back up. We want to be the number one podcast in the oh, world. Yeah, yeah, yeah what the, the fuck? I mean, if I'm motivated, you know, like it does kind of fuel that. There you go. Right there. Energy drinks send thousands to the ER each year. Yeah, but you know what? I guarantee you a lot of those, if not they're all of those. They're freaking out. Yes. They're all pussy. Because I like, remember oh. when I had three speed sacks and <laughs> six of those ephedra uh, hydroxy yeah. cut pills. Yeah, I don't know. Now, and I remember, like, I mean, I could, I my my eyeballs were, like, shaking and my hands were shaking and it's, like, three in the morning and I'm staring oh. at my ceiling. Like That's, a, that's not yeah, a bad like reason. Your heart is going to come out of your chest. Yeah, it's not a bad reason to go to the hospital. Well, bro. that's what I'm saying. There's oh, a yeah. lot of people that, and I was fine. I lived. I lived. But I didn't let's sleep till like, another day. Let's look up how many people went to the ER because of an edible. Yeah. I mean, come on. Like, it, the, the, well, you guys saw what happened to me once. Yeah, I did. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that freaked me out. Like, I know that there was, like, that one famous call with, with the, the cop. cop. Yeah. yeah it's one, of the, like, it's oh, one of the best. I think we're dying. If you're listening and you've never heard that, that's, like, worth a, you know, your five minutes yeah. of. Edibles least. won't kill you. The but, cop, the but cop but who They overdosed. will freak you out. I'll tell you what right now. I would I would overdose on almost any other drug than an edible. Yeah. Ooh, that doesn't. Oh, that's, that's, a, that's scary. That is a terrifying situation. Yeah. Hey, I hope you're enjoying this podcast. Real quick, head over to mindpumpfree.com. Check out all the free stuff that you can get. We'll give you all kinds of free things only on that site, mindpumpfree.com. All right, enjoy the rest of the podcast. Our first caller is Nicole from New Jersey. Hey, Nicole, how can we help you? Hi, guys. Thanks so much for having me. I'm a huge fan. I'm super excited to talk to you. So, my question is actually about um, my core. I've always struggled with like tightening up my core and strengthening my core and just my stomach area in general whenever I train. So I just wanted to ask what I can start to incorporate in my routine and in my programming to really help me strengthen my core and just like tighten up that tummy area. Okay. Now when you say, okay, so strengthening, you know, we can, we'll get to that. But when you say tightening up, do you mean leaner or do you mean it's just not like a, you know, sculpted or, or strong feeling? Uh, a little bit of both. Definitely leaner, like aesthetically, you know? Um, but yeah, I do feel like strength too. Like I really want to like make it strong just to help with like all my other lifts. Like I just know that if my core is just stronger, it will help improvements with so many of the other things that I do when I train. Right. Okay. So when it comes to strength, um, it's like training into any other body part. Now the core's got some of its own unique challenges. Technique and form is always important for every exercise, but when it comes to the core, it's especially important because uh, a lot of core exercises involve bringing the body forward, like folding forward. Well, we can do that without really activating the core properly. You can also do a lot of exercises that you normally do for other body parts, but incorporate a core stability component. This is where a physio ball can come in handy. So a physio ball you can use for dumbbell rows or seated presses or other exercises where you're kind of forced to engage the muscles of the core. Um, as far as training frequency is concerned, I would do, you know, good, decent workouts for the core a few days a week and then incorporate stability in the other workouts when you're training the rest of your body. Well, there's a couple things here. One, uh, I would also recommend stomach vacuums. I think that's an incredible exercise, especially if you're trying to get the, uh, the flat stomach look. Then there's the other thing that um, I've shared this on the podcast a long time ago. I haven't talked about this in a long time. When I fell out of shape, I was a 20% body fat. And when I leaned all the way down to 7%, which was the leanest I'd ever been in my life, I was left with this like bottom pooch that my clients used to tell me about that it was so stubborn for them to lose that I had never experienced this. The like, Joey, that's what we call it. Is that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, 
I was I was blown away that I had this. I was like, this didn't make sense to me. I'm leaner than I've ever been in my life, uh, even leaner than what I carried myself in my teens and twenties. Yet I had this like you know body fat that was sticking around in my in my lower abdominals, and it was really frustrating that I had been this low and still. Had, well, what I found was. I went on like a little bulk, a health, a, a, like a uh, you know a good bulk. I wasn't a dirty bulking. I just added calories and and put some weight on, and then I went back down and cut again. Then I bulked again, then cut it, and it took about three times of cutting and going lower than I'd ever been before to actually finally get that to go and, and and to eliminate that. And it's also one of the first places that it comes back when I put body fat on. So what I have found sometimes with my clients is they they had that same stubborn area that they're just they're frustrated with even when they feel like they're in shape everywhere else they've got this lower bit of body fat they don't seem to get rid of and sometimes that's we just we need to take the body to a, a new level of leanness mm. that they've never seen so that it taps into that utilizes that and then gets rid of it and so it did take me a few times of cutting before I actually eliminate all that yeah one more thing I wanted to add. Uh, I've noticed too with with some of my clients that uh, have you know really tried to emphasize uh, you know the flat stomach and how that looks and everything else have been also noticed uh, noticeably had an anterior pelvic tilt uh, and and you know an arch in their back and and if that's something too that uh, you know just posturally if, if you're more conscious of that and more intentional uh, with the way you carry yourself and engage your core and brace properly you know that's something too just aesthetically uh you know focusing on that will actually like help a lot in terms of like you know you feeling like you're presenting yourself well yeah at the end of the day i would train the core a few days a week i would do maybe you know two exercises each workout um every day you could do a little bit of core if you wanted to do the core stability movements and then when it comes to the body fat you know like what adam was saying the first place that you store body fat is always the last place that you're going to lose it so when people say it's stubborn, really it's just the last place your body decides to burn body. So it'll get lean everywhere else except for its preferred area uh, of storage, which just means you got to get even leaner to get it off. And at which point, sometimes you got to ask yourself, I mean, do I really want to get that lean? You know, a little bit of body fat's okay, especially for women. They can get so lean that their, their hormones get thrown off. Uh, their metabolism really starts to get affected negatively in the pursuit of this, you know, body fat percentage that really isn't that healthy. So you also want to, you know, make sure that you're doing this the right way and that you're, you know, that you've got a good relationship with your body. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's super helpful. It just is always like, I see my body changing and leaning out in so many other areas, like pretty quickly, which has been great, but that's just the one area. And I, and I probably don't train it enough. So that's definitely helpful. And I definitely do not do enough of this stability type movement and in my training. So that's, that's great to know and very helpful. Awesome. Thank you, Nicole. Thanks for calling. Thanks guys. Yeah. It's that, it's that, uh, you know, we all have that one area, Yeah, you mm -hmm. know, that just re like for me, my shoulders, arms and legs, I mean, they're always lean. I could get my body fat pretty high and I'll have shoulder striations. He's like, I'm pretty it's much sexy all, all over. I mean, yeah, no, it's pretty much my shoulders, no, my, my limbs, chest, one little my arms, area on my like, finger. Yeah. Like, it's just like, <laughs> oh, please, give me, no, give you know, it's, it's my trunk. It's my <laughs> trunk. My <laughs> trunk. My 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 gut and my love handle area. That that's where I'll store it. No, I, and, oh, so and too, I understand. Dude. I have to get really this, lean this for was, that to go away. You know, yeah. I talk about. Um, yeah, we haven't talked about this actually in a long time on the podcast. I know I shared it a lot earlier, especially when I was going through it. But uh, this this was one of those. There's been many things that uh, when I when I went through the whole you know cutting down that lean right, getting ready for like competing and stuff, uh, what it taught me or what it helped me to be a better coach. And this was something that I had heard so many times from clients, but had never really experienced it mm -hmm. myself. Which is that, you know, Adam, I feel like I'm really lean, but then I just can't get rid of this lower body, you know, lower pooch. And I had never seen that on myself until I did this. And I was like, what the hell? This doesn't make sense. I'm 7% body fat. I see I'm, I'm more vascular. I'm leaner than I've ever been in my life, yet I still yeah. got this body fat. And it did. It took about three times of pushing the levels of how lean I was before it finally like eliminated Yeah, a couple it. interesting mm -hmm. things, too, about that is hormones can affect uh, fat storage. So high-stress situations, you'll see sometimes more visceral body fat. And also, um, you know, body fat storage, you know, preference of the body might make you good at some things and worse at others. So what I mean by that is what you tend to see with high level female athletes 
is they tend to store more body fat in their midsection than the average female. Now, it's not because they play sports. It's just their genetics, but uh, it's beneficial for sports because if you do store body fat, you don't want it on your limbs if you're running, moving, and, and doing activities. Now, the reason why women store it in a lower body to begin with typically is because it's a lower center of gravity, and when they have a pregnant belly, it balances them out. Obviously, if they stored everything in their belly and they were pregnant, it would make them very – very unstable. So, so body fat, you know, the way your body stores body fat definitely can get affected by hormones. Uh, your, your, your sex at birth affects it as well. But I mean, it, it, largely it's your genetics. And so if you see a part of you that's not getting lean like you want, you might need to just get leaner. I also really like Justin's advice too about the posture because this was something that I, it, I didn't piece this together until later. And because I have that too, right? I have the, uh, you know, Instagram, you know, right. You know, butt butt position right. going on, right? Yeah. Arch and look back. Yeah. yeah. Low, low back. And it's actually very common, right? Yeah. I mean, my, uh, most clients suffered from this, whether how, how excessive or not. But when you're in that position where your 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 low back is arched like that, sticking your butt out, it does it sticks the belly out, and just by you rotating the pelvis and, and activating your core, you see like your stomach flatten out just from that. So I think that's a great point too. Right. Our next caller is Matt from Pennsylvania. Hey Matt, how can we help you? Hey guys, uh, first of all, uh, I discovered you guys like two months ago, and uh, I've been I've been watching you all over and all the time. And uh, like my YouTube feed is only mind pump and nothing else. So uh, I really appreciate what you guys are doing. Thank you. All right. Um, so I'm originally from Slovakia and um, I played basketball from a very young age till I was about 22. And I always had a problem to gain some muscles. Um, uh, obviously, because I was uh, running a lot, a lot of cardio. And um, I stopped doing sports at all when I was about 22. And I moved to US. Um, I, uh, I I ate very bad. I ate a lot of junk food because I thought that I just can't can't uh, gain weight. So I I wasn't paying attention at all. And then in a span about uh, in a span of uh, like two or three years, I gained like sixty pounds. Um, and I was I'm I'm like six four six five. And uh, when I was playing, I was uh, like one eighty one ninety. I couldn't go over one eighty. So I changed my diet. I, I uh, stopped eating junk and um, trying to avoid sodas and stuff like that. And uh, I went down to like 210. And now I'm at 210 uh, for like two or three years. Uh, I've been doing some um, like whole body workouts three days a week, but I, I can't stay uh, consistent. And um, now I'm moving back to my country, to Slovakia. And I know that because uh, I'm going to be working from noon till evening, basically. So now I know that I have that window from morning to noon where I can start working out and pay attention to my diet. So basically, my question was, uh, I want to start one of your programs and uh, I wanted to know which one would you guys recommend? And um, I have two little kids, so uh, that's why I, I couldn't stay uh, consistent uh, for the whole time. So. First of all, I would like to know which one uh, would you guys recommend? Uh, what should I be focusing on during the that the program you guys would recommend? And then, um, what should my main main focus be as a as a hard gainer? Yeah. Okay. Good. Good question. So uh, I'll give you three tips uh, that generally will uh, give you the biggest bang for your buck. Right. In other words, uh, these three things will make a pretty big difference for you. Number one is going to be to follow MAPS Anabolic. That program was specifically designed for people uh, who really want to build muscle who might find it challenging with uh, other workout programs. Now, in MAPS Anabolic, it recommends two or three foundational workouts a week. For you, do three foundational workouts a week. That means you may alternate okay. workout one and workout two in some of the phases. But then on the off days, right, on the days in between, it's very important you do at least two or three trigger sessions as explained in the program, those make a huge difference. And I think sometimes people skip those because mm -hmm. they still get great results okay. with the program, but they're missing out because the trigger sessions are, are very, very valuable. Now, the second piece of advice I'm going to give you is going to be to eat. Eat more than you think, okay? So you want to eat yeah. a lot of calories, eat foods that are easy to digest because you don't want to encounter the, the bloat or digestive issues that can sometimes happen with eating a lot of calories. So pick foods that digest very easily. Of course, eat a lot of protein, but you're going to have to jump your calories up, especially if you're a hard gainer, 
probably more um, than you think. And then the third thing would be to supplement with creatine. Creatine's going to benefit you quite mm-hmm. a bit uh, in the muscle department. And again, with MAPS Anabolic, what you're focusing on is building general strength. I mean, here, the bottom line is this. If you get stronger consistently over time and you feed your body, you're going to build muscle. That's just the bottom line. Matt, how, how active are you in comparison to back when you were playing basketball and the job that you're starting that's a noon uh, noon on? What's a, yeah, what, and what's it like? yeah, that's what I forgot to mention. So um, I'm sitting at the office and I'm pretty inactive. On the, I mean, on the weekends, I'm active because we go out with the kids and uh, – uh, but during the day I'm sitting in the office and, um, uh, yeah, those days I'm inactive. When I work out, when I work out three times a week, I would, I would consider that active, but, uh, I'm not really active in, uh, in the days when I don't work out. And I forgot to mention also that, uh, at home, um, I'm doing my, like a home gym or whatever it is. So I'm going to have a squat rack and uh barbell plates uh i have some dumbbells and the resistance band so that's this is this is what i perfect so that's perfect for maps anabolic uh i'll add one little thing so first of all i mean for a hard gainer the the new sedentary job will probably work in your favor a little bit so you know th- this is very similar okay. to my story i p- played basketball for a long time and i was yeah, always I moving around and burning calories like crazy and uh, when i finally switched to a job where i was sedentary uh it may not be the best for overall health, but it definitely helped me when it, in the hard gainer department because I was burning so many calories. I had to eat 5,000 a day, which I'm sure you know eating that many calories with all from healthy calories is tough to do, where you now being in a, a more sedentary job, that'll probably help you out. But I also would take that just to make sure this is where I see a lot of value in like uh, step counters or Fitbits or if you have an Apple Watch or whatever. Is kind yeah, of track track your activity level and make a conscious effort on the days that you find yourself. Like you you mentioned weekends, you tend to be more active. So I don't know if you still play pickup ball or you go do physical active things. Yeah, here and there, but during the COVID, uh, I wasn't able to. So okay, mm-hmm. so. So it so you start tracking your movement and really use it uh, not to get hung up on the exact numbers that it says calories burned or how many steps, but so just to get an idea of what a, a very active day looks like for you compared to a very sedentary day, and then make a conscious effort to boost the calories on those active days. That will also help you. But other than that, I would follow the Maps and a Ball mm-hmm. program yeah. to a T. And and just for my own question, have you ever done any? Uh, specific exercises where you've limited it down to one to five reps and that was your entire focus oh uh, yeah i'm pretty sure i did but for the past couple of years i've been doing uh like a full body workouts and i live in an apartment complex where we have we have a gym but uh, we don't have a barbell so they, pretty much what i was doing was a lot of dumbbells body weight works and uh some gym rings i, I love gym rings so yeah. I, I did that I bring that up just because like, I know a lot of the tendencies for athletes and people like myself is to really, uh, you know, keep going and, and, and the rest periods are really tough to, uh, you know, stick and, and lean into that. So, uh, to go through, especially that first phase of anabolic and stick to that protocol, uh, you know, and limit yourself, you know, to those five reps, um, and, and really just focus on, you know, grinding your way through that, but then going through those rest periods, uh, you know, uh-huh. trust the process with that and, and really, really try to challenge yourself not to, to keep going ahead and pushing yourself. Yeah. Matt, if you don't have maps anabolic, we're going to send that to you right now. Okay. Oh, perfect. Thanks so much. No problem. Man. Thanks for calling Matt. Yeah. Um, you know that this, it, it, you know, your question was great, Justin, because now it's kind of revealing how he's been working out, right? Body right. weight and dumbbells. Uh, yeah, kind of has sense. Which is, it'll build muscle. It's built some muscle on him, but if he really wants to pack on the mass, he's going to have to really build strength. Barbells are great. Yeah, I'm so that. glad yeah. you asked that because I almost recommended away from anabolic because I thought maybe he was following something very similar to anabolic originally. Originally, he was like, oh, three day a week, full body routine. I'm like, okay, that's very man- anabolic-esque. Maybe we'll right. put, put him like in power lift or a different direction. But knowing that he was doing body weight dumbbell work, he's missing out on one of the best parts of anabolic, which is phase one, which mm-hmm. is a barbell strength heavy heavy yeah. uh, phase. Just that new stimulus is going to provide quite a bit, and he'll be shocked what that does. Yeah. Our next caller is Sandy from Florida. Hey, Sandy. How can we help you? Hey, Sal. How are you? Good. Good. Hey, um, so I have kind of a two-parter question. Um, I'm currently running the MAPS Aesthetic Program. 
And my question is on the focus days, if I want to build my legs more, should I do it on more than one focus day? Yeah, you could definitely do that. You could definitely do all the focus days specific to, you know, one or two body parts to add more uh, volume to your workouts. Okay. But, you know, here's the uh, here's the other thing, too. A lot of times, and we hear, sometimes we get this from women, well, they'll follow MAPS Aesthetic or MAPS Anabolic, and they'll say a lot of, you know, it's uh, more upper body work than lower body work. And here's why it may seem that way with, with certain programs. If you're doing X amount of volume per muscle group, then uh -huh. when you look at the upper body, you have biceps, triceps, shoulders, chest, and back. With the lower body, you have quad, ham, and glutes, right? So that's three, three body parts. So the reality is the volume is is equivalent. It's just that there's fewer muscle uh, muscle groups in the lower body. I mean, even if you add calves, you still have less. So consider that as well, because some what I have seen from people is that they feel like, oh, I got to do more volume. They add more volume without following the program, believing that it's going to get them there faster. And really, it's all about the 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 effective dose. And the effective dose is it's it's perfect, right? More than that, you get there slower. Less than that. You get there slower. But again, MAPS, MAPS Aesthetic includes focus session days that allows you to add volume to whatever body parts that you want to train. I mean, I, I, if, if legs are your focus, I also like uh, making one day like a quad day and one day a ham day or do one that's oh. sure. So, you know, you don't have to necessarily do like a full leg routine on, the, on, on both focus days. One focus day could be dedicated to more towards, you know, the posterior chain and then one all the front, right? So you could do... You could split it like that. I love to do that if that's your main focus. But definitely, if that's your main focus, I think you said. I think I saw that you with back or buys you're doing on the other one. So I would, I would, yeah. I would go all. If legs are the main thing you're trying to bring up, yes. make make that the the centerpiece of those focus days. And then how you split them, split it up is up to you. You can either do all glute, hamstring, and uh, quads on both days, or you can go hamstring work all hamstring and glutes all on one day, and then all quad work on the other day, which would be phenomenal too. Um, and my other question is, um, I used to do lots of cardio. I was uh, high intensity. Um, I messed up my metabolism. I've slowed it down a lot. So I've cut down my cardio to three times a week. So I'm doing cardio only on the three focus days a week. I do it first thing in the morning, fasted, and then at lunchtime, I'll do my focus. Okay. So if, um, if if building and developing the legs is is a main focus, uh, I definitely wouldn't be doing any sort of high intensity cardio in the morning. So hopefully the cardio yeah. you're talking about is steady state or walking. So that would be my yeah. I do walking on the foundation days, and then on the focus days, I'll just do the elliptical. Or on Saturdays, I'll just do like a two minute run, one minute walk, up to like thirty minutes. Okay, well that works. And consider, look, you said you overdid cardio before. I mean, you're right. doing you're doing an okay amount of cardio now. And there's, there's again, there's nothing wrong with it if you love it. But if your intention with the cardio is to, I got to do more of it to get leaner. Uh, right. Well, then you're, you're you're yeah, that approach isn't really that effective. If it's if it's if it's all about that, then really it's about your food intake yeah. uh, and your know, resistance training. I mean, in Maps Aesthetic, because of the focus days. You're gonna be uh -huh. you're gonna be lifting weights five or six days a week, so yeah. you're, you're working out quite a bit. You would um, also be you you be also it'd be far more beneficial to be focused on building the legs and limiting almost all cardio to walking or none hardly at all, and then oh, really? switch yeah, and then switch in a in a month or two and at build in cardio to lean mm -hmm. out. Trying to all right. do all that cardio and also try and build your legs at the same time. I mean, you're you're sending a bit of a conflicting signal to your body. It's like, do you want me to build or do you want me to 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 break down? And you know, doing all that cardio and moving that much, you're going to tell the body to burn, 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 and it's going to want to lean out. Trying to do it simultaneously is really difficult. You, you'd be far better off focusing on building and developing the legs, reducing the amount of cardio that you're doing, get to a place where you're like, oh, wow, I feel like I've added an inch to my legs or my butt or whatever your focus area is. Now I want to lean out a little bit. Now let's start to introduce the cardio. That would be a better strategy than trying to do it all together at the same time. Okay. Even if the cardio is like, you know, five to six hours apart, it's still, you still 
would recommend the same thing. Absolutely. Yeah, it's not, I mean, again, there's nothing necessarily wrong uh, with, it's, I mean, if you enjoy it, it's great, it's activity, um, but based on what you're coming from and what mm -hmm. you're doing and what your goals are, I mean, you just focus on being active. I, you don't need to necessarily do structured cardiovascular workouts and then focus on your nutrition. If you notice your body's not getting leaner, I would right. focus on, but you did mention your metabolism was also uh, slow because of what you had done before. You might want to yeah. focus, uh, you know, some dedicated time on boosting that. Just build muscle for a while before even thinking about cutting. Uh, um, yeah. You know, get it up to a certain point to where your metabolism is roaring, and then you cut from there. And then you've got a great position to cut from. Otherwise, you'll you get stuck in this like, I cut, but then oh my gosh, I have to eat so little to maintain. This is not mm -hmm. sustainable. Then I gain the body fat, and you're kind of on this hamster wheel. Yeah, yeah, definitely doing that. Okay. Awesome. All right. Great. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, dude, that's so uh, so common with clients where you know they have like, I want to be lean, but I also want to build my legs. You know, it's like, well, you'd be far better off focusing on one or the other, mm -hmm. and in and, and putting all your energy towards building the metabolism, building the legs up, developing those, like the original part of the beginning of this question, and then eliminating all that cardio. And if you're somebody who, like Sal was alluding to. You, you were a cardio junkie before. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, so if she was my client, I wouldn't have let her do any cardio. Yeah, because like, you're yeah. trying to break that walk. I'd let her walk, right? So right. I wouldn't be like, oh, don't move now. But I would say, hey, we already know that this is something that you struggle with. We don't need it. You're trying, we're trying to build. We're trying to build your legs, build your metabolism. So it has no real place in our program right now. So let's eliminate any sort of hit interval training like she's doing right now for cardio. You can walk if you enjoy that and you and that's a, it's part yeah, of you like just your strengthen day. that signal more that the, the need is is that we need to build muscle in that that's general right. direction. And it doesn't mean that, you know, those those focus sessions are really intense because it's, you know, it's 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 pretty moderate the intensity. Really it's restorative and it's also sending and re repeating that signal, you know, that that this part of your body really needs to come up and develop. Yeah, I think you know, I've run into clients like this where it's you know, it's not necessarily that they love all the workouts, but rather Rather, they fear what will potentially happen That's right. yeah. if they're not doing all this activity. I mean, I've I've worked. It took there were people I've worked with. It took me years to slowly work it off because they were so afraid. What's going to happen when I don't do my you know twenty miles a week of running, or what's going to happen when I don't work out every single day? Mm -hmm. But little by little, I wore you know I wear them out, and they eventually cut it, and then all of a sudden they're like. I'm getting lean and it's easy and my body wants to stay lean. Like, this is super weird. What's going on? It's like, well, because we're now working with the body rather than against it. Our next caller is Frank from Washington. Hey, Frank, how can we help you? Hey, how's it going, guys? Good. I right. uh, just want to say uh, I'm a big fan of you guys and you really sent me in a 180 on what I thought I knew on health and fitness. So uh, thank you for all your content. Awesome. Uh, it's really changed me. Um, I was uh, diagnosed with low testosterone recently. Well, a couple months ago, like January. So I started with anabolic, like you guys have suggested in your, your podcast and it went really well. And now I'm in aesthetic and I actually like it better than that. Uh, but I've noticed that, um, I need a little bit more recovery and I've kind of developed some elbow pain. So I've kind of swapped going from like a foundational workout every other day. I'll do like a foundational and then do um, like two focus days and then the foundational. And I'm wondering if that's really going to affect the programming while I try to figure out uh, how to deal with recovery and this elbow pain. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great question. So, and and thank you so much for for following us. Um, so, Maps Aesthetic has a it's a it's it's written in a similar way to Maps Anabolic in terms of its structure, but it's a sure. lot more volume. Okay, there's a lot more volume in Maps Aesthetic. It's a very advanced uh, program in comparison uh, to Maps Anabolic. Now, what you're doing is is fine. Um, in fact, we encourage people to listen to their body and and try to find ways to modify the programs. Uh, to really suit themselves. Obviously, when we create these programs, we're writing them for the masses. So if I were training you personally, there would be some changes that I would make. Now, I, I will make a suggestion. What you're doing is okay, but I think I might have a better uh, option for you. And rather than spreading okay. rather than spreading out the foundational workouts, 
maintain the same level of frequency that we recommend in the program and just cut the volume down by about a third. Just take a third okay. of the set just take a third of the sets off of the off of the workout. So if the if the exercise is asking for, you know, nine sets for one body part, bring it down to six sets. Give that a shot because I think the frequency is a good thing. It may, it's probably the volume. It's probably the volume that's causing the problem. I, I also want to address, I mean, again, uh, to mm. echo what Sal said, I don't think that what you're doing is wrong. I think there's some other things, if you were a client of mine, that I would address. Um, you would definitely, I would have you on Maps Prime Pro. This is how I would use it. Um, it let's address your elbow pain. It, mm. You probably feel like golfer's elbow going on, so we would look at your your shoulder and wrist mobility. So, and, and that's the way Maps Prime Pro is designed is for you to look at all these major joints. So there's stuff for the wrist, there's stuff for the shoulders. And I would actually build that into your focus days. So like your focus days would now become a little more mobility driven to okay. ad address yes. the aches and pains that you're having. I would use Maps Prime Pro to complement what you're doing. And then if you still were feeling issues, and not getting beyond the, the the aches and chronic pain, then I would go to what Sal is saying and reduce the volume a bit. Um, but okay. I, I, I yeah. definitely would include Prime Pro, though, into what you're doing. I was going to bring that up and echo that, too, in terms of like really trying to incorporate that uh, in your strategy. One thing to bring up, too, uh, when we do kind of stack these programs together, the reason why we have a suggestion of even going through MAPS Performance and then MAPS Aesthetic is because of what we're addressing it with you know rotation, with, with joint function, with multi multi-planar type movements. Um, that uh, a lot of times, a lot of these programs in the gym, uh, you know, we're trying to build and develop muscle specifically, but we're not articulating our joints uh, to the full ex extent. And so this is something that now, you know, can, can sort of hit hit to like a tipping point where, you know, you're going to have so much progress because you've been loading it the same way and doing the same types of movements. Uh, we need to, we need to change that. So we need to add, uh, you know, a few of those, you know, extra movements, those rotational movements. So if you're doing presses, I suggest also to, to add some rotation in those presses. This is such a good point, Justin, like, and, and I, there's a lot of our audience that obviously hasn't been listening since the beginning. And when we created uh, MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic, we created them with the intent that 99% of the people would follow them in that order. And so when we, okay. when we wrote the programming and we thought about the things that were going to go into the second program, that's exactly what, what you're going through was what we were trying to, to prevent. Yeah, prevent from happening is okay. MAPS Anabolic is very much so, you know, focused in the same plane, strength, build strength, build a metabolism, phenomenal starter program. But then after that, if you're a client of mine, we've been training for three or four months, I know that I need to start doing some unilateral work, multi-planar stuff like Justin is saying, addressing joint mobility, working on range of motion. And that's why that, pro that program is heavily focused on that. That's why we built mobility days in on the uh, opposite of foundation days was we were trying to address this exact issue. And this is what sometimes happens when someone does like an anabolic program and they go right to like either aesthetic or go to strong or go to power lift. And they go to these, these programs that are heavily focused on building strength and muscle without addressing joint mobility. So in a perfect world, you actually would have went anabolic performance and then aesthetic. And I actually would bet that you wouldn't be dealing with some of the stuff you're dealing with in your elbow. Okay, yeah, that that makes sense. Uh, I I uh, I didn't pick that up from watching you guys, so that that makes a lot of sense to me. All right, Frank. So, how far along are you in Maps Aesthetic? Uh, I just finished week three. Okay, so if you want, there's two things we could do. Either one, you could take my advice, cut the volume down by a third, um, and we'll send you Maps Prime Pro. Or the second option, if you don't have Maps Performance, you're actually totally fine switching straight to Maps Performance right now. You're only three mm -hmm. weeks in. Just go to Mass okay. Performance, and if you don't have that program, I'll send that over to you. Which option do you want to do? Uh, well, I, I think I think I want to go back and, and try performance because um, the elbow pain is is there, but it it uh, you know it once I start get get lifting, it it kind of subdues. It mostly hurts when I'm not lifting. Got it. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're going to send over Maps Performance to you, and uh, if you don't have it, and just just follow that. Just jump right into it. Phase okay. one, and um, it's 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 very different. Yep. You're still going to build okay. muscle, but what you're going to get is a lot better mobility and movement. Then you can go back to Maps Aesthetic, mm -hmm. and you might uh, be singing a different story at that point. That's right. Keep us posted on your journey. I'd like, to, I'd like to hear how this goes for you. 
Sure. Yeah, I would love to. Yeah. And uh, again, you guys, thank you so much. Uh, you really had an impact on on my trajectory. So uh, thanks awesome. again. Thanks, for all that. thanks, man. Thanks, thank Frank. you. I'm so glad you brought that up, Justin, because, uh, you know, and we got to get better about this. And maybe this maybe, Doug, this is something that we need to create. Um, you know, we forget this. Like that. the perfect way to go. Yeah. Through. A lot of people yeah, don't, don't bring that up. Enough. We don't know that. I mean, yeah. we've written so many programs since then. That, they just think that. That's right. They just pick, you pick know, the one that's my favorite when we actually <laughs> we put a lot of effort into what would the first year of training really look like for yeah. a client? And that what we, we were presenting mm -hmm. that message early on all the time. But if you came in in the last two or three years and you didn't hear all that yeah. previous stuff, you don't know that. And so you just assume, oh, I'll pick the program that's my favorite when we actually wrote them in an order. Yeah, to go with, in that sequence. I mean, this was a big concern yeah. when we created a lot of our programs. I mm -hmm. mean, I remember when we wrote Maps Hit, you know, we were like, okay, uh, I think it's okay to create Maps Hit now and let's make sure we communicate to people that they need yeah. to do these other things first. And, you know, and this, again, this is because we were trainers for a long time. We're not just, you know, fit guys that wanted to create workouts for people to buy and follow what we wanted. We're, we're trainers. So we go into this like trainers would, and there definitely is a superior order of operation. So for uh, this exact reason, exactly. I mean, I love that. I love that we landed somebody like this. Cause I could see someone just going maps, anabolic maps, aesthetic map split. And then, you know, coming up with a lot of these issues. That happens right? a lot yeah. because right. especially if you're, and I, I mean, shoot, it would have, if, if I was a listener and I came in at this time, I would, I'm not, uh, I'm not drawn to the performance program. Mm hmm I'm not like I'm not trying to you know I'm not playing sports right now I'm not that doesn't appeal to me sure. I'm more I'm more the aesthetic driven guy so I would look at our programs and go like well maps in a bulk that looks like something I'd like or mm -hmm. maps aesthetic yeah maps split you know okay maybe maps strong like but performance it wouldn't even register that that's a program for me until you you hear why we wrote it and why it was the second program mm -hmm. there there was this exact intent because this is exactly what happens to somebody who trains for four or five, six months straight and doesn't address any sort of mobility work. It's very, very it'll, common. It'll sneak up on you. That's right. Sure. Our next caller is Anthony from California. Hey, what's up, Anthony? How can we help you? Hey, guys. How's it going? Good. All right. So recently I just finished a powerlifting competition and I used your guys' MAPS powerlift. And pretty much that's the way I've been training most of my life. Uh, I kind of use your guys' program to tweak it a little bit and do my own programming. But in December, I'm looking to get into the Sheriff's Academy. So I'm trying to change my programming a little bit so I can focus on more like endurance type training, losing some body fat, you know, getting used to doing body weight exercises. But I find that that's really hard for me to do that. Like mentally, I can't get over the fact that I'm going to lose all my strength. I'm going to get weak and skinny. So I find myself always reverting back to doing like heavy weight and low reps. Like the other day in the gym, I was trying to squat and I was like, okay, I'm going to keep it light. And I ended up going way too hard and I couldn't walk <laughs> like the next four days. So how would you get over that like mental block of, I know I'm going to get weaker, yeah. but it's for a purpose in the long run. And how would you program it? Cause like my only idea is just to do a bunch of reps and a bunch of reps and I do a bunch of cardio and do hit style training and don't eat and it's just not working for me so i was wondering what your guys's input would be yeah pretty, no. pretty, pretty sure we'd all be friends yeah i no. know yeah. <laughs> it's very I, common amongst the circle yeah here. yeah 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 no, I, I totally understand what you're what you're going through <laughs> so it, i mean okay so here's one strategy that could help is you got to take that focus that you have on on strength and put it on another physical pursuit so rather than saying mm -hmm. okay i'm going to be super strong be like, I want to be able to move better. I want to be able to move laterally. I want to be able to be more explosive. I want to be able to yeah. rotate, rotate better. You said you're going to be a sheriff. So uh, first off, thank you for doing that. Um, I think what what you guys do is tremendous um, and very valuable. Uh, but the skills that are required to do a good job as a sheriff, physically speaking, are much more than just strength. In fact, if all you mm -hmm. did was power lift, you could find yourself in a bad position if you haven't encountered that long, you know, last longer than, you know, 30 seconds, right? So <laughs> yeah. you, you need to have mobility. You need to have some speed, some strength, endurance. And so number one, use that same focus that you have on strength and focus on movement, range of motion, speed, explosiveness, maybe some stamina. The perfect mm -hmm. program that I would put you in, I think that would be great, would be uh, MAPS Performance. I think a MAPS Performance Workout Workout program for you is going to get you where you want to go performance wise. And then as far as getting leaner is concerned, that's always diet. It's always a diet yeah. uh, component. 
and do it slow, right? So do a slow cut. Like the slower yeah. you do the cut, the less you know strength or performance you'll end up losing. If you do an aggressive cut, you'll definitely lose weight faster. But then you'll notice some negatives in the, in terms of performance. Uh, I, I like Map Strong here too. So I, I so uh, and in, if you go performance route, which I don't disagree with Sal because I think that's great advice. Uh, performance to Strong would be phenomenal. The yeah. reason why Strong came to mind when I was listening to you was because. Uh, that one of the I think my favorite parts and brilliance of that program was the first phase is 20 reps. Yeah. yeah. And most people it's a gasser. Yeah. Most people. And then the, the work sessions are like intense. So you oh, yeah. talk about building stamina, durability, mm -hmm. and then challenging somebody who is used to working in the five rep range, loves chasing strength. Good luck yeah. doing that with 20 reps. And so, and a lot of people aren't ready for that curveball for that program. They think, oh, it's a strongman focused mm -hmm. program. Right. I'm going to be lifting all these like heavy stones once or twice. And it's no, that's not the way the program begins. And so I, yeah. I love strong and yeah. or performance for Sal's reasons followed yeah. by strong. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I mean, I would, I would definitely try to suggest as a prerequisite to go through performance just because, you know, the movement and, and, you know, the agility side of, of the job and all that is really a big consideration for the long term. Mm. So, you know, like in terms of like thinking immediately what I want, I want to be strong, but I also want to have this explosive, you know, big gas tank and everything, which strong would definitely provide, but let's, let's protect the joints. Let's move better. Let's get used to, you know, multiple planes of movement and being strong and powerful uh, and then build up yeah. your endurance. And then now we're really hammering the gas tank. Yeah, so I, I like the combo of the two. Yeah, because if you go straight to strong after only doing powerlifting for a long time, you're, the risk of injury kind of can get can get up there, right? Exactly. MAPS, yeah. MAPS performance. Plus, MAPS performance is the only program that we have where we actually structured in explosive training. The last phase in, in MAPS performance you're doing like explosive type training. And I tell you what, like, and it's great because it builds you up to that. I'll tell you what, that explosive capacity, there's nothing more applicable to what you're going to do than that. I mean, you can be strong as hell, yeah. but when you're yeah. explosive and strong, you're very, very effective. And mass performance builds you up to that point and then that last phase really incorporates and, it. And to address the cut, I actually think that just switching to that type of programming, you're we're going to probably lean out. Yeah. I mean the the amount of movement that is in that program with the mobility days in addition to that like and if you're used to more of a power lifting type of program long rest periods heavy lifts you know this will be a total shock to yeah, your body yeah. yeah you might just naturally lean out from that so what I tried to do, because like I said, I tried to do my own programming, but like the first day I tried to do it and I was like, oh, I heard them say to do hits. So I got on the assault bike and like 10 minutes in, I felt like I was going to vomit. Yeah. So I was like, okay, well, let's do some steady state. So then I, I just get into that, that all or nothing mode and I ran over three and a half miles. And then today I'm trying to walk and all my joints are aching and talking to me. So it's like that, that mentality I have is just like, you know, it's all or nothing, you know, all go. And it's just, that's, that's where I'm having that, the, uh, the complications and the problem is trying to follow the programming and work my way into it versus just saying, okay, now we're just going to start just running as long as we can and doing, you know, 20 minutes of hit on the assault bike and making yourself throw up. You know, you, you, you also pointed something else, Anthony. I think this is important. You have the self-awareness to know that you have this tendency to kind of go all or nothing guy. And so even though mm -hmm. we encourage you to modify and change the program, you would actually be somebody that I would challenge you to follow it to yeah. a T. Yeah. I would say use get, that intensity mm -hmm. to go very specific with what we have written out and like yeah, trust. Don't the even sway at all. Yeah, yeah. yeah you got, don't don't do the don't do the let me throw everything at my body but the kitchen sink approach. Be methodical. You'll get there faster if you mm -hmm. do it this way. You'll get there faster and more effectively if you're methodical. So if, if you don't have yeah. maps, if you don't have maps performance, we're gonna send that to you. Uh, once you get the program, you'll like phase one. Phase one is, you know, still got the different movements, but it's got that strength component. But then as you get into phase two, three, and, and so on, it gets very, very different. So start that mm -hmm. program, follow it to a T, um, and then watch what happens to how you feel and how you move. Yeah. Oh, I will. Thank you guys. Yeah, I have your maps, power lift, maps anywhere. And I'm doing some of the maps anywhere core stuff because, like I said, I neglected my core for a long time. But yeah, I'm super stoked. I'll definitely do the maps performance. All right, perfect. All We're right. sending it over. Awesome. Thank you guys. No problem. Yeah, it's really hard to get out of your own way. You know, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I get stuck in that shit. I, you totally. guys, I love. Well, and he's, you know, we. We encourage people to modify their program, and he sounds like he's a smart enough guy that he can do it himself. But here's an example of why you should follow it to a T. Mm -hmm. You know, which is typically what we tell most everybody is: mm -hmm. 
follow it one time to a T, like to really like trust the program and the process because there's things in there that we probably thought about that maybe you don't even realize and programmed in there that we want you to do so you can feel and see the benefits of it. And so I would challenge him to follow performance to an absolute T. And then maybe when you go back through it another time, you can start to modify yeah. and play And plus, with it. I mean, it's if you have that tendency, you know, sometimes you get in your own way. So yep. if it's some, if it's if it's written in the program, like, well, I know I want to do what I always do, but I got to follow what the program says. <laughs> right. So it's, it's sometimes a good it's a good thing to let go, have someone else create the workout for you, and then you yeah. just follow it because you know what your tendency is. Yeah, you're are. already disciplined and, and you have the hype. Now just put it in uh, you know the right direction that's like yeah. already laid out for you. But yeah, I would generally say for uh, law enforcement, generally speaking, MAPS performance would be the probably generally the best program. Yeah. Uh, for them to follow, and then strong would probably be a pretty close. It's a great follow, so long as they have decent mobility, you know, close second. All right, look, if you like our content, you got to go over to mindpumpfree.com. We got all kinds of free stuff that you can download, tons of stuff that you can download. Nothing costs a dime on that site. Mindpumpfree.com. Go ahead over there. Also, uh, you can find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. There's kind of a difference between wanting and liking. And what scientists who kind of study people, they kind of discovered that when you get cravings for this food, the wanting goes up, but the liking doesn't necessarily go up. It can even go down. It's like we want this stuff and then we eat it and 